Are you having trouble with managing your finances or confused with all the numbers swarming before you? Have you always wanted to learn how to budget but didn't know where to start? Well, fear not, we've got you covered. Here at Financial Synergy, we help you with your educated journey towards financial freedom. Let's face it, creating a household budget is intimidating and can be a tedious task. While there are more exciting things to do in life, creating a budget is one of the greatest methods to save money. Give it a shot, it's quick and straightforward. It'll also assist you in identifying areas or spending habits and illuminate where you may be able to save some money. The key to developing a budget is determining what works best for you and your family in terms of money management. There are numerous budgeting programs and templates available, but you must choose what works best for you. Managing your money is all about making decisions about how you earn, spend, save, and keep track of your money. A customized, realistic budget can assist you in setting objectives, directing expenditure, and managing your cash flow. While budgeting tools and techniques differ from person to person, most people follow six steps to construct a budget. Remember that this is more of an art than a science. Examine your objectives and personal values. What are the most important things to you? What are your most important financial or life goals? Your goals and objectives will assist you in developing a budget that allows you to meet your current obligations, participate in activities you enjoy, and prepare for the future. The first step in creating a budget, regardless of one's income or stage of life, is identifying one specific objective. It's challenging to stay motivated when you don't have any goals, and it's much more difficult to understand why you're managing your funds in the first place. The ultimate financial aim for the majority of people is financial independence. Of course, financial independence implies different things to different people. Still, for many people, it is the ability to accomplish the majority of what they want in life without worrying about money. This type of lifestyle is characterized by being debt-free, possessing a substantial savings account, and making investments. These milestones are much easier to achieve when you have a budget based on your final goal and a defined path that will take you to your destination. Gather and keep track of your financial data. You must understand what is happening with your money right now, including your income, expenses, and savings. What's on the way in? What's on the way out? What do you have stashed? Most people are aware of their regular incomes and spending, but they may not know their irregular or day-to-day -day expenditures. Track your income and expenses for at least 30 days to better understand your cash flow. Determine your income, the money you and your family regularly receive from jobs, investments, government assistance, or company sales. May be simple. Use your net or take-home monthly income after taxes and other payroll deductions for budgeting purposes. Collect income-related records such as pay stubs that illustrate how much you make and how frequently you make it from all sources. Add up your total. If you like, utilize a worksheet to ensure that everything is recorded. Keep track of your expenses. Whatever you spend your money on can be more difficult to monitor. You have set and consistent expenses such as rent and variable expenses such as groceries or entertainment. Gather monthly invoices, collect receipts, use a notepad, a worksheet, or an online budgeting tool to analyze your bank and credit card records to document all costs for at least 30 days meticulously. Choose the approach that is most convenient for you. Gather preliminary information or develop projections for irregular expected expenses, such as auto maintenance, an insurance payment, or car registration. After 30 days, gather all of your spending records, such as bills, receipts, bank statements, and notebooks, and sort them into categories, such as housing expenses and food expenses, before totaling your monthly expenses. Check your savings balance to see how much you already have set aside. Check in with yourself about your present financial situation. What's the bottom line for you? After you've gathered all of your financial information, subtract your monthly expenses from your monthly income to determine how much money is left over, also known as your bottom line, which you may use to either spend or save. If it is beneficial, a worksheet can be used. If your bottom line is negative, it means that you are spending more money than you are earning at the time of writing. Next, consider what immediate improvements you can make to increase your revenue, decrease your expenditures, or do both. If you have any money left over at the end of each month, examine whether it is sufficient to cover your monthly costs. Money set aside for emergencies, your financial goals, and spending that are important to you, such as exercise or entertainment. If not, which is frequently the case, you will need to make some adjustments to your present spending, saving, and earning patterns. Usually, a change in our financial behavior is required to achieve our financial goals and objectives. Is there a specific amount of money you must set aside each month to stay on track with your current status and plans? Make adjustments to the way you handle your finances. 
Once you have completed your financial evaluation, you should have a monetary figure in mind for how much you will need to modify your current financial practices. There are just three changes you can do to affect your bottom line. Increase your income, reduce your spending, or do both simultaneously. For example, increasing your income can be accomplished by turning a pastime into a business or second employment, optimizing your tax benefits, utilizing public benefits, or selling stuff that you no longer want or need. When it comes to cutting costs, start with broad modifications and work your way down to specific ones. First, make a list of your most essential items and priorities. Prioritization can be accomplished by using a tool such as a spreadsheet or a pen and paper. Then consider your least essential outgoings, such as groceries. What exactly is excessively expensive? What do you think you could improve? Spend some time taking a step back and looking at the larger picture. Make a list of ideas and get creative. Next, examine individual spending categories, such as transportation and insurance, and consider making adjustments. If possible, would you consider carpooling or taking public transit more frequently to save on gas? Would you be willing to search around for a more affordable insurance plan? Continue to drill down until your expenses are precisely where you want them to be. Then you can include the modifications in your budget. Determine your weak points, and then develop a budget. Everyone has parts of their budget where they are having difficulty. Regularly fluctuating areas such as groceries, dining out, and entertainment tend to be the weak points in the economy. These are the types of things that we typically want to spend our money on, and because they are enjoyable, it might be difficult to limit our spending on them. If your current income allows it, instead of beating yourself up about these weaknesses, try to give yourself a bit extra wiggle room if your current situation allows it. In addition to refraining from excessive spending, you should not entirely forego indulgences regularly either. If you try to avoid spending on things like eating out and entertainment, you may begin to feel deprived, which may lead to a spending spree at some point. Consider finding less expensive alternatives to activities you enjoy if your budget is extremely tight and you cannot afford any wiggle room. The pursuit of additional income is yet another option available. By this point, you've completed all of the complex tasks. The information about your income and expenses has been gathered and changes have been made to your habits. Put your new plan down on paper and make a public commitment to stick to it at this point. Use a worksheet, an app, a spreadsheet, or a notebook to create a written budget for your household expenses. It is critical that you locate a tool that is effective for mapping out your new savings and spending strategy. Follow up, keep track of and make adjustments as needed. You will still need to maintain your budget from month to month now that your basic budget has been established in general. So spend a few minutes at the end of each month putting together your budget plan. Maintain a record of your monthly expenditures and keep track of how you spend your money. This will assist you in ensuring that your budget categories are correctly set up and funded. It might also be beneficial to check in on your spending in the middle of the month to see if you're on track or whether you need to be a little bit more conscious of your spending during the last two weeks of the month. Follow your plan to the best of your ability and keep track of how much money you spend using a record-keeping technique that works well for you. At the absolute least, balance your intended budget with your actual costs every month. Your findings may assist you in making changes to your spending habits or your budget as a result of your research. Remember, a budget is a strategy for managing your finances in a convenient way for you. Creating a budget is not technically challenging, however, it necessitates some discipline and, in some instances, new habits. The benefits of learning how to manage your money are that you will not only feel more in charge of your finances, but you may also set yourself up for a lifetime of financial freedom. We hope you learned something from the video and utilize your money to work in your favor. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. We are Financial Synergy and we will see you again next time, Finance Warriors. Financial freedom is a term that we hear a lot these days. Different people arrive at various definitions. Some argue that it is about being able to buy what you want when you want, having no debt, supporting yourself, or simply being wealthy. Unfortunately, these are only hazy and half-baked responses. Though we spend a lot of time talking about it and how we can achieve financial freedom, the truth is that we have no idea what it means. And if we don't have a clear idea about our goal, how can we ever reach there? In this video, we discuss financial freedom and habits you need to adopt to achieve it. But before that, hello and welcome back to the channel. This is Financial Synergy. If you are new here, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications to be notified of every upload. We've all felt that sinking feeling in our stomach when we see the bill for an unexpected car repair. What are we going to do to pay for it? But what if a car repair was only a minor annoyance? Instead of being concerned, you pay the bill without hesitation. You've completely forgotten about it a week later. 
That's how little impact it has on your financial situation. It's not a life-threatening situation, it's barely a blip. Instead of panicking and relying on the government the next time a pandemic or recession strikes and you miss a monthly paycheck, you now have a safety net. You can concentrate on the other inconveniences of the crisis rather than where your family's next meal will come from. Do you have a sense of relief? That's how it feels to be financially free. Paying for a car repair without stress is only one aspect of the equation. It's more than just being able to cover unexpected expenses. It's knowing you don't have to worry about retirement because you've been investing consistently with your financial advisor for decades. It is the freedom to leave your job to pursue your passion, even if it means earning less money. Financial freedom entails making life decisions without being overly concerned about the financial consequences because you are financially prepared. You have control over your finances rather than being controlled by them. The road to financial independence is not a get-rich-quick scheme, and financial freedom does not absolve you of the responsibility of managing your money wisely. Quite the contrary. Complete financial control is the result of hard work, sacrifice, and time. And all of that hard work was well worth it. Are you ready to discover how to create a life of financial independence for yourself and your family? Begin by defining what financial freedom means to you. What does financial independence imply for you? Personal financial freedom is required. Dream big and be specific about your objectives. What does financial freedom mean to you? It could look something like this. Freedom to pursue a career you enjoy without fear of financial repercussions. Freedom to take an international trip every year without breaking the bank. Freedom to pay cash for a new ski boat. Freedom to respond to the needs of others with extravagant generosity. And freedom to retire a decade early. You have options when you have financial freedom. For example, you don't have to worry about whether your bank account can handle replacing your water heater or purchasing groceries for a single mother who has recently lost her job. That may appear to be too good to be true, but you can do it. Here are some habits you should adopt if you want to start your journey to financial freedom. Before we go ahead and discuss these habits, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments down below. Many people want to achieve financial independence. It generally entails having enough savings, investments, and cash on hand to afford the lifestyle you desire for yourself and your family, as well as growing a nest egg that will allow you to retire or pursue the career of your choice without being constrained by the need to earn a certain amount each year. Unfortunately, far too many people do not succeed. They are burdened by mounting debt, financial emergencies, unexpected events such as a hurricane or earthquake, or a pandemic that upend plans and reveal previously unseen gaps in their safety nets. Trouble happens to almost everyone, but these 12 habits can help you get back on track. Number 1. Establish Life Objectives What does financial independence mean to you? A desire for it is too broad a goal. Instead, be more specific. Make a list of how much money you should have in your bank account, the lifestyle you want, and when you want to achieve it. The more specific your goals, the more likely you are to achieve them. Then, working backward from your current age, set financial milestones at regular intervals. Write everything down neatly and place the goal sheet at the top of your financial binder. Number 2. Create a budget Making and sticking to a monthly household budget is the best way to ensure that all bills are paid and savings are on track. It's also a routine that reinforces your goals and strengthens your resolve in the face of temptation to splurge. Number 3. Completely pay off credit cards Credit cards and other high-interest consumer loans are detrimental to wealth creation. Instead, make it a habit to pay off the entire balance every month. Student loans, mortgages, and other similar loans typically have much lower interest rates, so repaying them is not an urgent matter. However, paying on time is important and will help you build a good credit rating. Number 4. Set up automatic savings First and foremost, pay yourself. Enroll in your company's retirement plan and take advantage of any matching contribution benefits. It's also a good idea to set up an automatic withdrawal for an emergency fund that can be used for unexpected expenses, as well as an automatic contribution to a brokerage account or something similar. Ideally, the money should be withdrawn on the same day you receive your paycheck, so it never even comes into contact with your hands, avoiding temptation completely. Keep in mind, however, that the recommended amount to save is hotly debated. In some cases, the viability of such a fund may be called into question. Number 5. Begin investing right away People may question this in bad stock markets, but historically there has been no better way to grow your money than investing. Compound interest will help it grow exponentially over time, but it'll take a long time to achieve meaningful growth. 
So don't try to be a stock picker or convince yourself that you can be the next Warren Buffett. There can only be one. Instead, open an online brokerage account that allows you to easily learn how to invest, build a manageable portfolio, and make automatic weekly or monthly contributions to it. To assist you in getting started, we've ranked the best online brokers for beginners. Number 6. Be wary of your credit. When you buy a new car or refinance a mortgage, the interest rate you are offered is determined by your credit score. It also affects seemingly unrelated things like car insurance and life insurance premiums. The reasoning is that someone reckless with their money is also likely to be reckless with other aspects of their life, such as driving and drinking. This is why obtaining a credit report at regular intervals is crucial to ensure that no erroneous black markets are tarnishing your reputation. To further protect your information, you should look into one of the best credit monitoring services. Number 7. Bargain Many Americans are hesitant to bargain for goods and services, fearing that they will appear cheap. However, if you can overcome this cultural barrier, you could save thousands of dollars each year. Small businesses, in particular, are more amenable to bargaining, and buying in bulk or repeat business can lead to substantial savings. Number 8. Ongoing Education Each year, review all applicable changes in tax laws to ensure that all adjustments and deductions are maximized. In addition, keep up with financial news and stock market developments, and don't be afraid to adjust your investment portfolio accordingly. Knowledge is also your best defense against those who prey on inexperienced investors to make a quick buck. Number 9. Correct Maintenance Taking care of one's property extends the life of everything from cars and lawn mowers to shoes and clothing. Because maintenance is a fraction of the cost of replacement, it is an investment that should not be overlooked. Number 10. Live within your means It is not difficult to master a frugal lifestyle by adopting the mindset of living life to the fullest with less. Indeed, many wealthy people made a habit of living below their means before becoming wealthy. This isn't a challenge to live a minimalist lifestyle or a rallying cry to throw away items you've accumulated over the years. Making small adjustments by distinguishing between what you need and want is a financially beneficial habit to develop. Number 11. Consult with a financial advisor. Once you've amassed a reasonable amount of wealth, whether through liquidation investments or tangible assets that aren't as easily converted to cash, hire a financial advisor to educate you and assist you in making decisions. Number 12. Take good care of yourself. The principle of proper maintenance applies to the body as well. Invest in your health by visiting doctors and dentists regularly and follow medical advice for any problems you encounter. Many problems can be alleviated or even prevented by making lifestyle changes such as increasing physical activity and eating a healthier diet. Some companies have a limited number of sick days, resulting in a significant loss of income once those days are used up. In addition, obesity and illness raise insurance premiums, and poor health may necessitate an early retirement with a lower monthly income. That's it for today. If you want more financial content, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications to be notified of every upload. This is Financial Synergy, and we will see you in our next video. Whether you've been managing your finances for years or are just getting started, it can be challenging to determine when to save and when to invest. Are you unsure about when to save and when to invest? Find your answers right here. Do you have trouble with managing your finances or are you just confused about all of the numbers swarming in front of you? Well, fear not, we've got you covered. Here at Financial Synergy, we help you with your educated journey towards financial freedom. Saving and investing are two distinct approaches to financial security. The act of putting money aside for future use is known as saving. Investing is the process of purchasing assets to profit or gain revenue. These assets can range from collectibles to real estate, but the most prevalent are securities such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and exchange-traded funds ETFs. Both savers and investors postpone spending now to have more money tomorrow. This is one of the reasons why people use the terms saving and investing interchangeably. Both techniques are based on the idea of practicing financial discipline today in exchange for a more prosperous future. So, how do you decide when to take the safe road and save, and when to take a chance to gain higher returns and invest? Here's what you should know. What exactly is saving? Saving refers to the process of putting money aside for future purchases. The reason for saving is usually because you don't have enough money to buy what you need right now. Therefore, you need to save some of your income regularly until you do. The most critical aspect of saving is to ensure that you have money when you need it. To keep your money safe, you can bury cash beneath your mattress or, more often, use a savings account at your bank. 
Advantages and Disadvantages of Saving There are numerous advantages to saving rather than investing. First, if you don't make withdrawals, the dollar amount you save in a savings account will not decline over time. This is significant because some objectives must be met regardless of whether investment prices are rising or falling. Saving rather than investing allows you to attain your objective on time if you save the appropriate amount each month. Divide the total amount you need to save by the number of months until you reach your goal to determine the amount you need to save each month. However, there are drawbacks to saving. Each year, the value of the money you save decreases due to inflation. If you earn interest, it may help to offset the negative impact of inflation. Unfortunately, interest rates rarely keep pace with inflation. Saving also implies that you will need to set aside more money each month than you would if you obtained higher returns on your investments. For example, if you're only earning 1% interest on your savings account but could earn 8% on your investment, you'll need to make up the difference by placing more money in your savings account to meet your goal at the same time. What exactly is investing? Investing likewise entails setting money aside for the future, but the primary distinction is the reason for doing so. The goal of investing is to grow your savings quicker than is possible in the savings account to have more money in the future. Bigger investment earnings are attainable by accepting a higher risk with your money, which means that investments might go down as well as up in value. Investments can be made through a brokerage account or a multi-asset investing platform such as Flowbank. The Benefits and Drawbacks of Investing Investing can also be advantageous. For example, investing allows your money to increase quicker than it would in a savings account. Your returns will compound if you have a long time until you need to reach your goal. This means that your investment earnings will make money over time in addition to a better rate of return on investment. The advantage of more significant compounding returns is that you won't have to invest as much each month as you would have to save to accomplish your objective. Investing, on the other hand, isn't necessarily a positive thing. Investment prices may fall just when you need the money, putting you in a financial jam. If this occurs, you'll have to choose a less expensive choice, postpone your objective until you can save more money, or postpone your goal until the value of your investments increases. The difference between saving and investing. When you save, you keep your money in cash. You may put the money in a high interest savings account or a shoebox in your closet. When you invest, you exchange cash for another asset. You then anticipate the asset to appreciate, generate income, or both. For example, you might buy stock with the hopes that it will appreciate and give you dividends over time. Alternatively, you might purchase bonds or bond funds to get interest payments as income in the future. When should you save and when should you invest? It might be challenging to know whether to save or to invest. Each person's goals and conditions are unique. Your decision should be based on your scenario. If you are unsure what to do, you should consult a financial advisor who can assist you in making the right decision for you. However, there is a general structure that works for a wide range of people. Step 1. Create a retirement account First, check if your 401k or other company retirement account offers a matching contribution. If your employer matches the funds, you should be able to contribute to your retirement account. Their balance matching is practically free money, so you shouldn't pass it up. Step 2. Create an emergency fund Next, set aside $500 to $1,500 in a savings account for an emergency fund. A small emergency fund is critical for staying out of debt for good. Rather than putting minor crises on your credit card, which could lead to more debt accumulation, you could use your emergency money to cover minor situations. Step 3. Pay off your debts. Pay off high interest debt after you've built up a little emergency reserve. It is up to you if you decide what constitutes a high interest rate, but it must contain loans with 10% or greater interest rates. Step 4. Fund your retirement accounts to the hilt. After that, invest in and max out an IRA. Whether you choose an IRA or a Roth IRA, it's entirely up to you, but you should invest in a tax-advantaged account in either case. In 2018, you could contribute up to $5,500 per year plus an additional $1,000 per year if you are 50 or older. After that, fund your employee retirement account to the brim. This is done after an IRA since you have additional alternatives for investing your IRA. You can pick where your IRA is held and what it invests in, whereas a corporate retirement account is limited to the alternatives available through your plan. You must also consider one-time objectives. You'll also need to save for big one-time ambitions like buying a house or a car using cash. It is up to you to decide where you want to place these objectives within the framework outlined above. You'll balance these objectives with your retirement investment to ensure that you meet both objectives within the timeframes you're comfortable with. 
Depending on your flexibility and the time range of your goal, you'll have to determine whether to save or invest to achieve these objectives. If you absolutely must meet a deadline, you're probably better off saving rather than investing. On the other hand, investing may be an option to consider if you're a little more flexible about attaining a goal. You could earn better returns on your investment, but a bad year in the markets could cause you to miss out on your target date. How to choose between saving and investing It can be challenging to decide whether to save or invest for a specific objective. Here are two ideas to help you determine which is best for you. Save money if you have short-term goals. To begin, if you must have the money by a specified date, save rather than invest. Then, there's no risk of your balance diminishing when you save. Investments, on the other hand, might lose value. If you have long-term goals, invest. Next, investing allows you to earn higher returns if you have a more flexible time frame and you can delay your goal if things don't go as planned. The secret is to be able to postpone your goal. For example, if your investments were down when you expected to attain your objective, waiting a few years may result in your investments reverting to a greater value. Alternatively, do both. Of course, you can combine saving and investing. You can save the money you require and invest the money that would be good but isn't required to fulfill your primary aim. Another alternative is investing towards a long-term goal and gradually transitioning to saving as the objective approaches. This helps to avoid a rapid reduction in your investment values, which could cause you to miss your target. The general rule of thumb is to prioritize saving if you need funds soon and investing if you plan for your long-term financial future. Aside from your financial objectives, you should consider your risk tolerance. For example, if you are worried about the prospect of your investments losing money at some point, you may not be able to invest. However, with sufficient information of the long-term predicted profits in the stock market proportionate to the risk, most people who are hesitant to invest come around eventually. Hiring a financial advisor is one method to overcome the fear of first-time investing. Finally, it is up to you to decide whether saving or investing is the better option for achieving your financial objectives. And of course, how and whether you invest, save, or do a combination of the two will most certainly change over time as your priorities and ambitions shift. We hope you have learned something from the video today and start making your money work in your favor. Make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. This is Financial Synergy, and we'll see you again next time, finance warriors. Pay yourself first? I know what you're thinking, but that seems impossible with all of your other financial obligations right now. However, it might not be as difficult or impossible as you believe. All you have to do is learn to prioritize your finances and set financial goals with deadlines. Saving for the future, for example, cannot be stuck at the bottom of your priority list when it comes to your finances, even if the future appears to be far away. There are several simple baby steps you can take to help you begin the habit of paying yourself first. So, welcome back to Financial Synergy. Before we continue, please take a brief moment, go down and smash the like button, and if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, please subscribe and stay connected to us. It's a familiar refrain in the world of personal finance. If you want to build wealth, you have got to pay yourself first. But what does it mean to pay yourself first? And how can such an odd-sounding concept change the trajectory of your financial life? Paying yourself first means setting aside part of your income in a savings or investment account before doing anything else. Before upgrading your smartphone, buying new jeans, paying the utilities, or springing for happy hour drinks with your three closest friends. So, why should you always pay yourself first? There are two main reasons you should always pay yourself first, emergencies and financial goals. Unfortunately, financial emergencies do occur in life. They can take many forms, including job loss, illness, and so on. However, you will be able to meet these situations without taking on further debt if you grow your emergency fund by paying yourself first. Second, to stay on track and save money, you must set financial goals. Your financial goals are the main things you want in life but will have to pay for. They can be anything your heart wants, such as a vacation, a new home, a college education for your child, or a debt-free lifestyle. You can meet the expanse of your financial goals without going into debt if you pay yourself first just as you can with an emergency fund. When you think of your savings plan as a bill that you must pay every month, you can automate the process of saving and accumulate significant wealth over time. Still not persuaded it's the right path to financial stability? Keep watching! Here are further 10 reasons you should pay yourself first. Reason number one, figure out how much you can afford. Take a look at your budget. First, determine the amount you need to put toward your essential expenses each month. 
Then, subtract that amount from the monthly revenue you expect to receive. Your flexible income is the amount of money you have left over, which you can use to select how much money to save each month. This amount can be increased by keeping track of your spending each month and eliminating any unnecessary expenses. Yes, I know I said you should pay yourself first, but you can't neglect your other financial obligations like rent, loans, groceries, and so on. You'll only get yourself in a difficulty and further away from your financial goals if you do so. Reason number two, it sets proper priorities. What's more important than putting money aside for your future? What other issues do you have that are more important than your family's long-term financial stability? Paying yourself first develops a fundamental idea for successful saving. I matter, and I'm going to start acting because I do. Remember that wealth accumulation is the result of intention, consistency, discipline, and big picture thinking. Reason number three, it's an easy approach. Paying yourself first with automated payroll deductions is a quick and easy way to save. The set it and forget it strategy makes saving and investing simply because the money is promptly redirected to a 401k, individual retirement account, savings account, or other investment vehicles. The set it and forget it strategy makes saving and investing simple. What is the significance of such immediacy? Because it alleviates the constant feeling of lack that has wrecked so many people's best financial plans. Reason number four, it taps into the power of dollar cost averaging. Investors that use dollar cost averaging buy a constant dollar amount of a stock or investment, regardless of the share price. Because the investment is made regularly, that set dollar amount buys more shares when the price is low and fewer when the price is high. This investment strategy helps investors avoid the risk of investing a large amount of money at a time when stock values are high. However, it is a move that gives you less value for your money. Reason number five, what's last is what's left. There is a name for folks who try to save only what is left over at the end of the month. They are called spenders. New wants and needs inevitably find their way into quickly depleting any surplus. Paying yourself first, taking your savings first, investing it, and managing the rest efficiently is a significantly better method. Before jumping ahead, make sure to leave a like and don't forget to join Financial Synergy by hitting the subscribe button. If we missed something important so far, let us know in the comments below. Now, back to our list. Reason number six, it builds discipline. Paying yourself first by regularly contributing a fixed amount of money to a savings or retirement account builds financial discipline. This discipline can be used in a variety of financial and non-financial situations. Saving becomes simple over time, just like any other habit. As your wealth grows, you will find new ways to save money, reduce expenses, and raise your income. Reason number seven, it creates a healthy work reward cycle. Have you ever felt like modern life is a never-ending cycle of work, spending, and repeat? Starting a savings plan and witnessing your money grow is a great method to combat that practically universal emotion. Paying yourself first starts a new cycle, in which your hard work slowly grows your net worth, extends your prospects, and gives you a level of freedom that extra stuff can't. Reason number eight, it models smart financial strategy. I've always believed in bringing up the subject of money with children. Of course, you don't want to place your financial burdens on your children's shoulders. Nonetheless, practicing and explaining good money-saving strategies such as paying yourself first, avoiding credit card debt, and living within your means can be invaluable. Financial transparency helps youngsters develop practical money management skills that will serve them well in adulthood by demystifying the realm of personal finance. Reason number nine, provide sustainability. Your business should be there to help you, not the other way around. It means it should pay you enough to maintain your standard of living. You shouldn't have to make sacrifices just to keep your doors open or even to expand your business. If this happens, you'll find yourself tied to the thing you made. When you pay yourself first, you can live a comfortable, not opulent lifestyle. This reduces stress, provides a pleasant home life, and allows you to focus on growing your business and serving your clients. If you don't do this, the stress and sacrifice will eventually wear you down and you'll decide to give up. Reason number 10, develop momentum. Emotional agility is essential for any entrepreneur and without it, you'll struggle to gain momentum. When you're getting paid, it's a lot easier to stay flexible and committed to your business. Momentum will carry you through the tough times and propel you to even greater heights in the good ones. Paying yourself last and being okay with whatever's left after you've paid everyone else is the most effective way to combat momentum. Reason number 11, building the profitability muscle. As an entrepreneur, you are the result of your thinking, and if you don't develop the habit of being profitable, you may never achieve your goals. 
The reason you're in business is to make money, not to make a profit. You're not alone if you feel terrible about generating a profit. However, many entrepreneurs must overcome this feeling and recognize that profit is the reason for their existence. The more you pay yourself first and make a profit, the more your thinking will change and you will make it a habit for the rest of your company's life. You are the leader, captain, and number one salesperson as the business owner. How can you expect your business to expand if the most important person, you, isn't actually being paid what you're worth? Pay yourself first and your business will grow alongside you. The most important thing to remember when it comes to paying yourself first is to remain consistent and to treat the money you save as off limits except for its intended use, emergencies. It may be difficult to spot the advantages of paying yourself first right away, but the money will be there when you need it. Simply prioritize your finances so that you may move ahead and achieve your financial goals. If you started today, or maybe you have started already, woohoo! What would you save for? Comment below to let me know. If you would like to learn more about how to take your entrepreneurial business to the next level, subscribe to our channel, Financial Synergy, and stay connected with our squad. Before we wrap up, make sure you leave a thumbs up for this video. If you want financial freedom in your life, you have to struggle more. Bye for now. See you next time.